Episode 56, will these comics make good film and television shows? We got Marvel, we got DC, and we got Skybound. Check it out right now. All right, welcome back to another episode. We got some exciting stuff today. We're going to start out with Superman. And then we have the last uh, Star Wars issue for Bounty Hunters. And then we're going to talk about Cobra Commander number one. So let's jump into this right now. But before we do, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, I am Frank Zenka. I am your host. I am an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer. So exciting stuff. I just moved to Atlanta several months ago. Uh, and now braving the cold from Los Angeles. This is definitely colder tonight than uh, I have seen in many, many years. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right into it. We have Superman number 10 by Joshua Williamson, I believe, yes. And uh, so the last, the last issue uh, ended with Superman going into the Old West. So there was a little bit of a, uh, a mayhem with Marilyn Moonlight, and uh, they ended up in the Old West. But we saw like a panel, almost like what happened with uh, Back, to the Back to the Future Part Two, where we saw them, you know, kind of going into the past, and then we picked it up in the next movie. The same thing we did here. So, uh, but he was on top of a train, like doing like a holdup, and that's never touched on in this issue. So the, a lot of uh, Lex Luthor's villains or people that have a grudge against him have now teamed up against him. And Superman, of course, is trying to get in the middle of it all. And on top of that, uh, Luthor is in prison, and he left all of LexCorp to... Superman, it's now called Supercore, and Lena Luthor works there, and um, Mercy and all that stuff uh, are all uh, all under basically his command now. So I don't know why Lena Luthor looks like Brainiac, but she look at her look at her hair, uh, look at her forehead. She's got that's why they wear all the Superman symbols is because it's Supercore. Um, but yeah, so I don't. I don't know why she looks like that. I don't know why she looks like Brainiac. But, uh, yeah, so they're trying to figure out where he is. And then we got this nice... Like, I like Westerns. And that's why I feel this is kind of wasted. All right? This is more of... A, this story should have been uh, two issues. And it's only one. So I feel like it was shoved in here because Joshua Williamson just wanted to play with the old West. And that's how I feel. I feel this is like a complete throwaway issue uh, where it doesn't really move anything along. And Marilyn Moonlight looks pretty good there. Uh, they talk about the fact that she's, you know, has to walk around there today. But they find all these people murdered, uh, you know, and they find out it's not bullets at all, but lasers. And, of course, he insists on burying them. Uh, I like her hair. I like what they did with her hair there, where the... Uh, it's all braided. It's really long, and it's braided with uh, that glowing, whatever glowing stuff. But we find out a little bit about her past in this as well. Uh, I do not like how they drew him spinning the gun. It should have been, uh, you know, lighter. They should have been, you know, it shouldn't have just been lines, really. Uh, but anyway, this is the, the villain here. Uh, so I guess he's from the future as well. And I forgot his name already. Uh, but uh, I do it doesn't matter. So I guess he was hired, but we see constantly uh, this black girl here. She kind of keeps popping up, and I'm like, are they kind of going woke with it, or what? What's the situation there? Um, but no, there was actually a storyline to it, so I was okay with it. Um, as long as there's a reason why you're introducing characters and you're doing nods to things, I'm fine with it. Uh, where if it's just in there for no reason, then, you know, just because it's a cultural thing, then I do have a problem with it. But that's not how it is here. But anyway, I guess he has 
they, they show the you know flashback there of uh, Superman fighting the guy in the past or in the future in this case their past is the future of the world but their past and then we see that he has laser guns and they're stuck in this past and they just happen to run into a guy that has a time machine isn't that convenient so he realizes he probably doesn't have his powers and that's why he's stuck there and he's like I'm gonna kill you and we're gonna do a thing and he's like where's your gun he's like I don't need any uh, and he shoots him, and he's like, hey, you're dead, yeah, you're dead. Um, but no, you know, we just get the, the beefcake there of his clothes being gone. Now he flies up, and I guess he has his powers back. Because Malaman Moonlight says later, did you know you weren't going to have your, your powers, or you knew you were going to? And he's like, I don't know. Uh, he didn't really answer the question. So he has this big hover bike, and that's futuristic, and all this stuff, and nobody questions it. I find that really hard to believe. Um, but she lassos him, and then we get, that's why I was saying, this, the black girl pops up again, and, uh, and they put the guy behind bars. But again, there was a reason for that. Uh, so and I love the, the glowing horse she's on. And he, she's like, did you just, he, so Superman says, you just inspire yourself to be a hero. And then I'm like, oh, okay, that's her future self. I get it. Or her past self, seeing her future self. So I'm, you know, I, I like that. And, uh, and then we get a bit about her past where she was killed. She's lived the entire life. And somebody brought her back. I don't really understand any of it. So she lived an entire life and then she was brought back. I don't know how that's possible. Uh, I mean, I know it's comics and it's sci-fi, but I don't know even the sci-fi version of bringing somebody back that's dead and old and decayed. So you're not bringing back their body, but yet they have a body? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to do sci-fi, then you should have another body where then you're putting, you know, a reminiscent version of their selves I mean there's sci-fi ways of doing it but there's not you know just having a bunch of electrodes just making an electric body I, I, I is it an Android body I don't I don't really understand it they don't really explain it or anything and then it almost looks like the like the art changes here so uh, where he's back now he goes down to the Daily Planet. But of course, he saves a cat in the meantime. <laughs> Gotta stop for the cat in the tree. Gotta stop for the cat in the tree. <laughs> so when he gets there, Lena's like, no, no, fly away right now. Get out while you can, blah, blah, blah. But no, it's too late. He, he, he hesitated too long. And a uh, kryptonite thing, he just got his powers back. And his kryptonite thing, I almost thought he cut his hand off there, but he didn't. And um, he gets slammed. And I... See, I didn't think he beat the whole chained guy, and he didn't. So he's still there, but he's like, oh, this is all of Luther's villains now all teaming up. So, and, uh, and he says, uh, uh, a member uh, who has uh, seeked wrong by, uh, oh, that bald charlatan. Uh, countless times, and they're asking him to join the group of people that are against Luther. So again, uh, this issue, I love having Superman in the Old West. I think that's very interesting. Uh, but it was too easy. First of all, the, he totally discounted him on the train from the last issue. It's like that never happened. And then on top of that, uh, we we don't have any... Which is, he just happens to meet somebody from the future that has a time machine. It's all just very convenient. And it seemed very too easy for them to get back. You know, that's why I would have stretched it out. It'll have a little bit more of a harder time where, you know, we're kind of biting our nails. Are they going to get back and have something else from Metropolis happening where if he doesn't get back in time, uh, to, to no pun intended there, to stop it? You know, and then he arrives back just in time as opposed to 
him getting as soon as he gets back he gets his ass kicked you know so uh i don't know i i'm not happy with this issue happy with parts of it and i'm happy overall i'm not happy with it uh, i think it was a wasted opportunity just for him to play in the sandbox all right so i think that superman in the uh in the in old west would be kind of fun though uh so let's see what uh way he goes with it but uh at this you know he's already back and now we're into something so this is the uh, last issue, the, the uh, series finale uh, of uh, Star Wars Bounty Hunters. See, it even says on it, the grand finale, so you can't miss it. Uh, it is an oversized issue as well. Uh, and the funny part is that nothing happens. <laughs> you have an oversized final issue where you can do anything you want. You can kill people off. You can literally do anything you want because it's the last issue. And he does nothing with it. Ethan Sachs is the name of the, the writer on this. Uh, the artwork is decent. But instead, we go back to set up, uh, you know, Chewie and Lando and everything else going on to Jabba's Palace. We don't need this setup. We don't care. The, the, the fact that there's... Already storylines happening between Empire and Jedi make no sense right off the bat. There's no reason to set it up. Because we're as as fans, we're already discounting that because we know that Luke and Leia and everything else would not wait months and months and months and months to not rescue Han. And that's how this is. I mean there's they're they're going from one adventure to the next adventure and then they're just leaving Han behind. I, I mean I, nobody buys that. So there's no reason for this setup. So it's a waste. Uh, and again, I've already dropped. I dropped Darth Vader. I dropped uh, Alyssa Wong's Dr. Aphra. Uh, I dropped the regular Star Wars title. I was collecting all four, and then they went to $5. And the other books weren't even good enough for me to continue, so I stopped them all. I stayed with this one, and now this one's ending, so I'm, dra I'm literally connecting. Uh, I'm collecting no Star Wars books at all now. So they lost every dollar from me from by raising the price. It was the stupidest decision ever. At least if they start going to 30 pages and charging $5, okay, at least we're getting more. But to go 20, 22 pages for $5 it's just, and having backup stories really pisses me off. But anyway, so we're in, and I'm really not going to go through this because it's really a waste of time. Uh, but uh, I was not happy with this issue. He could have done anything. So we start out in Jabba's Palace. Uh, he's like, are you here to save Solo? And he's like, no, uh, I want your droid. We're like, there was no setup for this droid ever. And then we have Dengar, and then we have Boba Fett, and we have all this stuff happen. So he, he kicks Dengar's ass because Dengar's always, for some reason, the punching bag of this book. Uh, it has been for 40, 30, 40 issues. So he kicks some other guys' asses. Uh, I do like Valance. I will miss reading him. And, you know, he confronts Jabba, and that's where he says, so you're here to free Solo, and because you see Han in the back there hanging. And he's like, no, I want your droid. Meanwhile, you know that he's kind of setting up, because he, he's saying, Chewbacca, I hope you do your, your side. And then we have a little fight with Boba Fett, uh, who, of course, takes him out. And they throw him in some kind of an arena. Um... So this is the rest of the fight with Boba Fett. They throw him in an arena. And he's like, whatever droid you pull, you put at me, you know, I'm going to take it out. And then we get, uh, you know, him going, uh, you know, don't worry about it. I'll take it. But here's the droid. It comes, it towers over him. And they call it a mecha droid or something like that. Yeah, mega droid. Come on, you can't come up with anything better than a mega droid. Come on, man. So anyway, he can, he's starting to get his ass kicked, and we get this whole fight scene. See what I'm saying? There was so much you can do. And then Losha and uh, Tonga and Zuckus and Forlom all show up to save him. Why Why was this all set up? For, the, for what reason? For this droid that they didn't even know existed? They knew a, a droid existed, but I had no idea what the hell it was. Nor would they know that he was fighting it. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's all just stupid. It's all just stupid. 
you know, it's a, and the whole the whole rest of the book is just one big fight scene, and he gets his arm ripped off, of course, uh, and they explain that you know Boba Fett was in on it, and of course he uh, he doesn't want a droid taking over his job, basically, and. Then we have, you know, Han and Luke. They get the signal from Valance. So does that mean this whole... They should just stop at this point because it doesn't make any sense. They should just stop and uh, create something new. And, uh, you know, like that's what Dark Horse did. They, they had, you know, a whole new group. And I guess they settled down and have... Uh, I guess that's the enemy girl. And she's got a whole bunch of the cats. And they decide to open a bar. Uh, and they even talk about having the, the, uh, the, the band from the original series there. And she's like, don't you see? It's going to sound like the scene from Bugsy. Don't you see it? Don't you see what I see? It's going to be awesome. We'll have gambling and everything else in there. And then we, they have to close up his old lover there that has the one eye. So he, uh, she's, they're about to assassinate her, and he comes up at the last minute and saves her. And they run off into the sunset, you know, come with me if you want to live situation here. And it's all just shit. Again, you know, based on my other reviews, I like the group of bounty hunters getting together and kind of doing... Jobs for possibly good, possibly bad, depending on what kind of, uh, you know, which I, I did that too. I did the, I, I, my renegades uh, that I did in Destiny Aurora, you know, depend on uh, how much money swung them in one direction or the other. You know, and So I like that idea and uh, having it in the Star Wars universe, universe would be fun where you had Jedis and everything else kind of popping up. Uh, but this there's been and I like I would love to see Valance in real life but there's nothing especially in this issue and the previous storyline uh, I like Valance going evil that would be kind of fun too to play with like it did in the previous one uh, but this particular issue is just the final issue and this is all you can come up with man it's bad not showing much uh, writing chops there Ethan sorry brother uh, anyway, if uh, if it wasn't the last one, I would be like, I would probably be ending it because apparently he's out of juice. So luckily they ended it here. All right, so let's move on to what everybody's been talking about. Cobra Commander number one. So the Duke one, so the regular G.I. Joe title I by Larry Hama, I read two issues. I cannot read anymore. He's going into zombies. He's, he's, they're all over the place. There's all snake eye, snake eyes ripoffs, you know. Like every third guy is a snake eyes ripoff. I, I don't know. I, I didn't care anymore. I I stopped it. So I came into Duke being uh, very uh, pessimistic about what it's going to be, and I really liked Duke. I thought Duke was real. I don't like the art in it, but I thought Duke was very good. They set up the whole Transformers, the Energon universe. So the the regular GI Joe. American Hero one doesn't have anything with the Energon universe. So it's uh, Void Rivals, Transformers that I'm not reading. I'm not really a big Transformers fan. Duke, uh, who is trying to go after Starscream, and now Cobra Commander. So that's all the parts so far. And Duke and Cobra Commander are all both miniseries. Uh, so this is again by Joshua Williamson, the same guy who wrote Superman. So I read two books by him uh, in one, in, you know, within a couple of days. So, we don't know why Cobra Commander is in the Arctic, or wherever he is. There's a lot of snow. And he walks, so he's like, what if Cobra Commander walked into a bar? <laughs> it's a joke, uh, apparently. And uh, so he says, I need somebody's car. And uh, he's like, I don't know. The guy was like being a smart ass. I don't know how you got in here anyway without a car or a truck or whatever else. And he says, oh, your truck will do. And he proceeds to kill the guy and take his truck. And uh, they walk out saying, uh, the, the bartender, and they walk out and say, you didn't pay your bill, and they see the dead body. So it's been a long time since I saw the cartoon, the movie cartoon back in, I guess, the early 90s. Uh, and I don't remember the whole Cobra Law thing, 
But when I saw this, I felt like I was watched, I was I was seeing something out of Aquaman. You know, it looks like Atlantis. So I was like, what the hell is this? And we have like alien creatures or whatever else, and I'm like, this whole Cobra Law thing, I'm not buying it. I don't I don't like this whole Cobra Law thing. I know it's part of probably part of canon, but it, it doesn't do anything for me. Because uh, you know, I like my G.I. Joe grounded. Uh, and that's why the whole zombie thing doesn't work for me. So anyway, we get this, and you know, there's some kind of uh, a mob about to break through the doors um, of this whole science lab, of which Cobra Commander is one of the head scientists, which I didn't realize he was a scientist, but I guess he is. And I, I like his, uh, his face shield there and stuff like that, though. Um, so yeah, so he's like, I, I just need, uh, I need some, I need you guys to buy me some time. <laughs> so he throws, a, he throws a grenade, uh, killing a few of them, and he gave one to the girl to throw, and she's like, Am I supposed to blow, throw this? <laughs> and he's like, You fool! <laughs> so she blows herself up along with him. And uh, he's not in good shape. So they, uh, I guess they routed the whole thing. And they're using a snake or whatever else. Yeah, the whole, that, that whole Chandra Law thing, does, the Cobra Law thing doesn't work for me at all. And I guess he's got an eye on top of his head or something. I mean, look at that. His eye is not his eye. It's like above his eye. And he's all in, you know, blue bandages or whatever else. And they gave him, gave him a new helmet. I don't, I don't like any of this. Uh, this doesn't, none of this works for me. You know, and here, you know, we have, you know, the alien. She looks like something out of Star Wars. You know, this whole, this whole alien world thing doesn't work for me at all. Um, and then he, this reminds me of uh, the Supreme Commander there from the original Battlestar Galactica before Baltar took over. That's what it reminds me of. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we're getting all this weird stuff. I don't know, it's just, just too weird for, for me, for, for, uh, for G.I. Joe. And so he fights these guys. I don't know, you know, he's, and he even says, this is the interesting part, I'm not a fighter, but he throws these nano droids at them or whatever, and it kills them. So I thought that was interesting. Where the writer with Josh Williamson is saying, yeah, I, I got to figure out something else because if he's a scientist and an inventor then and he's not a fighter, what else can I do? And this is a good, I like this part. So, yeah, so he kills them and he leaves and we find out that he has Megatron with no arms. Notice that he has no arms. And I like this splash page. is really, really nice. So apparently, at this point, when this is a flashback, then uh, apparently he's in Cobra Commander now. His charge of Cobra Command or Cobra, whatever. So where is Megatron then? If this is like in the past, so or is it? I don't know. Yeah, it must be because it's now he's back in the car. So that must be in the past. So where is Megatron then? And I like this too. So he ends up going to see the Dreadnoughts. So I thought that was kind of cool bringing them into it. So I I am not a I'm not as much a fan of this issue as everybody else is because I don't like all the alien stuff. Or this hidden secret world uh, that supposedly Cobra Commander comes from. Uh, but I like the whole thing about uh, Megatron and him having Megatron and then him going to see the Dregnox. I have I like all that. So I liked half the issue, if half the issue, not even. Uh, I'm waiting to see where it goes, though. If the, the least amount of Cobra lost stuff I can get uh, from the next few issues would be great. Um, and I would love to see a new G.I. Joe movie where they do it well. And they do the villains well. And they barely ever do. So let's recap real quick. Uh, Cobra Commander, 
not this particular thing, but I would love to see G.I. Joe on the big screen again. Uh, Bounty Hunters, uh, I like the idea, but this issue is horrible. And Superman, a wasted issue uh, where they could have done a lot more with the West and kept them there for at least another issue. So that's my uh, two cents on all these. So what are you guys reading? Let me know. Do you guys agree with me? Do you not? I know a lot of people like Cobra uh, Commander a lot more than I did, uh, but I'm a little bit more picky. <laughs> and it's been a long time since I, I saw the cartoon, and I don't, can't remember uh, that even happening in the, in the, the uh, cartoon movie. All right, well, that's it for me. Thank you guys uh, so much for helping me grow the channel. And if it's your first time here, again, make, make sure you like. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because it's free. Why haven't you subscribed yet? <laughs> so, yeah, I'd like to grow the channel out to like the next 5,000 you know, 5, people. So we're more than halfway there right now. Uh, and, uh, and, yeah, I'd love to continue doing uh, more reviews. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'm going to be able to start uh, a job soon. <laughs> And, uh, but in the meantime, I'll continue to do comic reviews, movie reviews, and uh, board game stuff. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember that the, in a few weeks, I'm going to be launching uh, the uh, Lords of L.A. Uh, for anybody that uh, hasn't pledged yet. They can do a late pledge. And I have been working every day on uh, the Mark Spears monster card game that we're doing which is a deck builder area control that i did the mechanics where he's doing the art so we're kind of teaming up uh i've been doing play testing and uh yeah it's been going really well so i'm looking forward to launching that so i've been building out the kickstarter all right thanks a lot guys have a great rest of your week uh great weekend and i will see you guys on the next episode all right bye, -bye.